Welcome back to Math Mini Lessons. We're going to use everything we've learned so far to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators in word problems, which are never everyone's fave, but you know what? You get more practice, you'll feel more confident. So we're going to use our same criteria for success, which is to create like denominators using any type of sound strategy. We're going to accurately add and subtract fractions, and we're going to tell peers what the final solution means in the context of the word problem, meaning we want to make sure that number means something, and you're going to see me using the solve method to do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my acronym for solve, give myself a lot of room here for the V, and watch me go through the problem. For S, we're going to study the problem. Mr. Morris built a fence to enclose his yard. He put up three fourths of the fence on Monday. On Tuesday, he put up one sixth of the fence and on Wednesday, he put up the rest of the fence. What portion of the fence did he put up on Wednesday? Okay, so I have the key numbers here. I know I'm, on three different days, he puts a part of the fence and I know the whole fence would be equal to one. So I wanna know how much did he put up on Wednesday or what fraction was put up on Wednesday. And our, let's organize our facts. We know that we had three fourths on Monday and then he did one sixth on Tuesday and we did some number over six on Wednesday and we know that all of them together add up to one, to one whole. So always just organizing my facts. And notice there's some facts there that I added that weren't necessarily in a problem. Like I know that in this case, um, my fractions all have to add up to one. Um, but actually I'm not too sure if my, if six is gonna be my denominator. So I'm just gonna leave a big question mark here, like what part, and I know it's gonna be a fraction, is on Wednesday. So here's my plan. I'm going to, if I were to visually look at this, And I know I have three fourths, one sixth, I need to know the rest. I know that all of these are equal to one. So I wanna figure out how much this part is and I'm gonna subtract the sum of this from one, like whatever that sum is. So that's gonna be my plan. One minus three fourths plus one six. And that's gonna give me that number, that number that I want, okay? Now, I'm also writing it this way because I, I like putting everything instead of as two different steps, I like putting them together. But I know some of you may have said, add these first, and then whatever that number is, I would do one minus that sum. I, I just wanted to put it all as one part. All right, so let's start by adding those two fractions with unlike denominators. And you guys know I love to stack. And I'm thinking of my multiples for four, and I'm saying them in my head. Four, eight, 12. 12 and six match. So I'm gonna put 12 on both. Three times 12, uh, three times four makes 12, so three times three makes nine. Six times two makes 12, so one times two is two. Now I can add these together. And now I can do my final part, one minus 11 twelfths. Now, my one has to be a fraction, so obviously what fraction am I gonna choose? Duh, 12 over 12. I'm gonna choose that one so it's the same denominator. And I can subtract it and I get 1 12th. So there is my answer, 1 12th. But um, we're gonna put that, we're gonna explain what that answer means. So one twelfth um, of the fence was put up on Wednesday and done. So there you go. This is my, my steps are solved. Uh, just to kind of summarize it, I studied a problem for S and kind of put it in my own words. 
Then I organize my facts, that's what the O means. I line up a plan, so I line it up and I try and make a number sentence, like one sentence if possible. But if you have multiple steps, that's okay. And then V is to verify my plan, like I actually do the plan and show all my work. Notice all my work is right there visible. And then E is explain my answer, okay? So this is a great way of getting full credit if I was taking a, a test to show my thinking and show my process. So let's hit pause and jot this down into our notes. Joey sells candy to make extra spending money. One eighth of the candy were Skittles, one fifth were Snickers, the rest of the candy were Swedish fish. Uh, express the Swedish fish in fractional form. So this is a very similar problem like the last one. So I'm going to put my solve up again. And so in studying the problem, what are they really asking? Um, what fraction are Swedish fish? And in terms of organizing my facts, I know that one eighth our Skittles and I know one-fifth our Snickers and some number is my Swedish fish that's what I need to figure out and I know that all of them add up to one okay so this is kind of the same thing that we talked about before where I'm just going to add, so I'm going to do one minus, again, my Skittles and my Swedish fish. So one eighth plus one fifth, and that's going to give me that number, my Swedish fish. All right. So, and I hope you're seeing why, because I have two parts that I know already, and I'm just adding those two parts that I know. One eighth one fifth so I'm adding these two together and then when I find that number I'm subtracting it from one all right so let's verify our plan we're gonna start with um, the eight fifth I'm sorry the one eighth let's give myself some room. one eighth plus one fifth I can I know that my common denominator is gonna be 40 and I'm gonna make equivalent fractions. And now I can add them up together. And I'm getting 13 out of 40. So that's all I've done to add them up. Now I'm doing uh, one minus 13 over 40, or 40 over 40 minus 13 over 40 which is equal to, let's see, add seven, I guess 20, so 27 over 40, all right? So I'm gonna put that into context. Um, 27 over 40, 2740 is, hmm, how can I say it's in a full sentence? Joey sells candy, 2740, is the amount of candy that are Swedish fish. And sometimes I just have to read my own question, what fraction are Swedish fish? 2740 is the fraction. So instead of amount, I'm gonna put the fraction. of candy that are Swedish fish. All right, so hit pause and let's jot this one down in your notes as well. Here's our last part, the guided practice. I'm gonna read it with you and then we're gonna hit pause to try it on your own and then unpause to see if our work matches. Kim voted for on a location for a field trip, three fourths of the class voted museum, one eighth for the zoo, the rest of the class is for the nature park. What fraction of the class voted for the nature park. So it's the same type of model we had before, where we have three fourths, one eighth, and some number we do not know. So I hit pause and work out the problem and unpause to see if you have the same solution. 
Okay, I hope you're ready. Let's show the answer in three, two, one. The answer is one eighth. All right, if you have the right answer, congratulations. You can move on to the next part of practice. If you had a different answer, keep watching and see where our work was kind of different. So the first thing again, remember we're adding up these two parts that we have, and then we're gonna subtract from one. Since all the, the whole class would be one whole class. So we're gonna add three fourths plus one eighth. But they have different denominators. So the first thing you should have done is just change it so they have the same denominators. And you should have gotten six eighths plus one eighth. And that would have given you seven eighths. So if you stopped there and chose seven eighths, that's probably why, because you didn't do your second step. Um, if you subtracted, and you may have gotten, if you got five eighths, it's probably because you subtracted here, but that's not what we're doing yet. Remember, we're subtracting from one. So let's get to the next part. So now that we know we have seven eighths of the class voted for museum or zoo, we're gonna do one minus seven eighths. So let's change that. Eight over eight minus seven eighths is equal to one eighths. And that's how I got my our final answer one eighths and one half was just um honestly it was just there as an as an error all right so i hope this was super helpful remember for these types of problems you're going to see today uh you're if you're getting through two sets of numbers out of three you're trying to figure out what that last number is you're going to use this type of form so practice with one another this is a very wordy challenging problem so again you just take it one part at a time and you can keep rewatching the video to see how I work through the problem so you can practice the same way. That's it for today, Math Marvels. I will see you in the next one. Bye.